Oh, guys, RJ made something really, really delicious today. Oh, and it's also one of my favorites. Um, and RJ has actually made this before, back when we uh, were in quarantine. Um, and yesterday, we had a new shipment of stuff. Guys, check out what RJ just made. Mmm. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. OMG guys, pampano. Mmm, my favorite fish in the entire world. Do you guys know pampano? I forgot what the English term for it is. It's from the ocean and oh, it tastes so good guys. Like no matter how you cook it, but my favorite way is steamed. It's not a very bony fish. The meat tastes so good. Oh, my mouth's watering. And it's just honestly such a creamy meat. It's not so fishy tasting. <gasps> I mean, I will just sing praises of Pampano forever. Thank you. Oh my. Thanks, babe. How about it? Mm, yes, sure. Okra. Can I have this onion too? Guys, look at this onion. That's my level over onion. That's the onion that's been sitting in the fridge this whole week. Guys, mm. so this is calamansi. It's a type of citrus that we regularly use. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my gosh. Watch this, guys. Here's the Pampano, right? Mmm, look at that. Oh my. Mmm, mmm, oh my gosh. Look at how juicy this meat is. Mmm, see that? Wow. You guys wanna try it? Here, open, open, open. Yes, oh, it's so juicy, guys. The juice is dripping off this piece of fish. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is some good, good fish. Oh my gosh. Guys, five Mabuhai stars! Mmm. Oh my. Pampano, honestly, my favorite fish. So good. Do you guys like Pampano? Have you guys had it? I'm sure other cultures eat it too. You guys probably just call it different things. It's a very like common ocean fish. Mmm. 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 Oh yes, let's have these lady fingers as they're called. <laughs> Okra. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. -mm. What is that noise? I hear like this weird noise outside. Okay, anyways. Mmm. Look at that. Mm. What's your favorite fish, guys? Let me know in the comments. I know there are a lot of salmon fans out there. I would like to hear some recommendations for like not so popular fishes. We will try to look. Oh my gosh, red snapper is another one. Mm. So good. And red snapper is delicious raw. Yes, guys. In Palau, we went deep sea fishing and we caught so many fish. We made it all into sashimi. It was so good mm. in Palau. Did you see the Palau vlogs? You must. Some of my favorite of all the vlogs we've ever done. Mm. Mm. We have red snapper. We do? Oh my gosh, RJ says we have red snapper! This huge styrofoam box came in yesterday. Um, RJ had, had ordered for delivery like fish, raw fish. As you saw in yesterday's vlog, we had um, clams. Today, Pampano, we also have red snapper apparently. And I believe some amazing giant prawns. So, more seafood coming up. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, guys, look at what else arrived yesterday. Alfalfa! Yes! Mm, smells so earthy. I'm putting balsamic glaze all over this and I'm just gonna eat the whole thing right out of this package because this rots very fast. Like it can't stay in the fridge for like three or four days. Nope. It will mold. And that would be such a waste because there is so much healthy goodness in here. It's a superfood actually. Oh, uh, it reminds me when I used to sprout for Ligaya, my bird. Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. I'm just following what my body's craving for. Today it's fish and like greens. Mm. But later it'll be spicy Korean noodles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you like? Open, open, open. Take a bite. Yes. Mm. Salads are so good. Mm -hmm. Mm-mm, really good. 
Good morning, the RJ is preparing also the food of the dogs. Today he mixed in some of the okra, which is great. The dogs will have some delicious okra. I've soaked some of the dog pellets in water. Before we used to mix in white rice, but this is better because this is high quality dog pellet with a lot of good stuff in there. I soak it so that it's soft and then we just mix it in. No, I just cut the whole one. Cypher, who are you barking at down there? I think that's the Taho man. Okay, okay. It's okay. Stop. No barking. Come, food. Let's go. Look at that, guys. Doesn't it remind you of preparing? Back when I used to prepare Ligaya's breakfast. Okay, doggies, we got some delicious food for ya. Mmm. Yes, Sahara's eating. She's not much of a vegetable girl, but I think she'll just incidentally consume some of the okra, which is okay. Yes. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Cypher is totally a vegetable lover, always has been ever since he was a puppy. He will cherish and love this. Good boy, Saifs. Good morning, Mabu High Squad. How are you? Did you sleep well? I'm just here with the kids <laughs> by the viewing deck. They're getting some sun, some morning sun. Hi, guys. You guys are being, oh, you guys are being rough, as usual. <laughs> they play like crazy, especially mornings and evenings. There they go. Ah. Uh, I got so much done. I showered. Ooh, that is a bright light. Man, I can't wait. When RJ and I get to move, I will go out and have my coffee outside and soak in some good vitamin D3. When you live in a condo, it's easy to like go days without getting natural sunlight. Now I know like glass filters out a lot of the very beneficial ultraviolet light that you need. Um, but I mean at least it's something and I have the windows open see so some of it is like natural like this part is natural <laughs> Come natural light. I'll absorb thee through my palm But yeah, all of you guys who live in like homes or Apartments or condos with a balcony you guys are so lucky um, which also brings me back to Remember that vlog when we visited the Mobu High Squad farmhouse and architect Dennis was suggesting we have tinted windows Just so our home can be cooler. I've decided that no, we're gonna do all glass windows We can always use blinds and the property is very breezy anyways, and it's like cool so We'll just like open windows and let the breeze like blow through the house. Uh, we'll even have our aviary open so it can breathe through there. And I'm not too worried really about the house overheating because it's architect Dennis designed it really well in terms of like ventilation. In fact, the original plan was to have the house on like stilts, <laughs> like to raise it slightly above the ground so air could blow through underneath and then up through the aviary. So like there would be like huge circulation of air through the house, but we didn't do that. That design didn't get approved by the uh, developer. So yeah, so now uh, I've decided clear windows so we can have some good sunlight coming in. Sunlight is good. I love it. It's good for mood stabilization, good for sleep, good for all of that, good for our bones. Um, and yeah, I, I think we're not going to do tinted windows. Drinking some Cypher's coffee. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys sleep well? Any interesting dreams? Mm -hmm. I'm really happy today because today, is the big vaccination day of my parents and my aunts and uncles in Canada. My frontliner cousin, as I mentioned in a previous vlog, she booked all of my, my aunts and uncles and including my parents uh, to go in. Yay, I'm very excited for that. I do hear that Canada is slightly behind the ball in terms of like disseminating vaccines. Like US is like way ahead of the game, apparently, um, in terms of like vaccine distribution. <laughs> Philippines, we're, we're behind. Like we're behind. But I hope we get vaccinated soon. I don't know. Just something I hope for and wish. See, the dogs just know naturally to like bask in the sun. Cypher loves sunbathing. So does Sahara. And I remember growing up with my dogs in Canada, they would always find a ray of light in the house streaming in from one of the windows to bathe. Like literally, it could be a small ray of light this big and the dogs would like try to bathe in that little square <laughs> of light. They just naturally know. It's really great. Ooh, and I was thinking the other day, man, it will be so fun when we move 
because I can start to keep large scale reptiles again. Ooh, I can't wait! Mm, mm. I would love to have an iguana. Um, I used to have a huge, huge iguana in Toronto named Izzy. He was huge. So tame, claws were extremely sharp. So you, it, to handle this lizard, you needed long sleeves, a leather jacket, gloves, or something. Claws were sharp, but otherwise super tame. Oh my, and they, they're completely vegetarian. And here's the thing, a lot of people get these iguanas when they're tiny, right? When they're small, as babies. And then, like, in a few years, they're massive, like five feet long. And then people are like, okay, this is way too big for us to keep, we can't keep this anymore. So then they need, they end up needing homes. And and a lot of times like when you have a lizard that's five feet they need a massive enclosure um so i hope to possibly take in any like rescue any iguanas i would love i mean see this is what i was thinking too our aviary wouldn't it be cool if it was just one huge iguana sanctuary but no rj said no <laughs> it'll be birds <laughs> that's the original plan. we'll have to build some other cage for the for the iguanas Shh. I do believe, however, that in some cases, there can be reptiles released into our um, aviary. Benevolent ones uh, that are compatible with birds. Like, I'm thinking, I don't know, various geckos, which kind of stay on the wall, on the branches, in the decor. That could work. They occupy different niches, right? So I, I don't foresee the birds attacking the geckos and I don't see the geckos attacking the birds either. Possibly chameleon. These are things that I would have to really experiment and like try out and supervise. <laughs> I would love for the aviary to be just one big biodome. You know, you know what I mean? Um, we have various uh, creatures that depend on each other or that stay out of each other's way, sharing a space. And they're not competing over territory and food. So I said uh, that is essentially the key. Basically building a three-story biological community. Wouldn't that be awesome? I'm already doing it in tanks. I could probably do it in like large scale. Oh my gosh. That will be cool. We could probably release a few like terrestrial lizards. Oh, I would love that. Like skinks or grass lizards, things like that. Mmm, that would be so neat. I don't foresee like budgies attacking like little tiny lizards on the ground. Oh my gosh, this would be so... Okay, I never thought of this. I just thought of this today for some reason. Oh my god, we're turning the aviary into a biodome. Sorry, I lost the connection between what I was talking about when talking about the window all the way going to iguanas. Um, the cool, what I wanted to say was, the cool thing about keeping exotic reptiles here in the Philippines, um, and exotic animals in general, is that we don't need heat lamps, generally speaking. Like, for example, my green tree python on my balcony, it don't need heat lamps. It's just there. Like, this is the perfect temperature for it. Perfect humidity for it. However, if I were to keep my green tree python in Canada, I would need heat lamps, humidifiers, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what the cool thing I love about living here in the Philippines is that if you're a reptile lover, or like if you love keeping arachnids and, you know, like exotic creatures, it's the perfect environment for it. I don't have to worry about be it being too dry or it being too cold. Um, another reptile that RJ really, really wants to keep is an Aldabra tortoise. We could definitely do that on the Mobuhai Squad farm, most likely on the other side, on the, uh, the side lot where we're, you know, keeping it kind of wild, growing a garden, that kind of thing. Its enclosure can go there. After visiting the breeding facility for tortoises though, we've discovered that the Philippines is actually too cold for it. Too cold! They're from an island called Aldabra. I believe it's somewhere in South Asia and it's very hot there. So an Aldabra tortoise will actually need a heat lamp in its like little cave. We need to build it like an, a, a little a hide. I don't know, we'll need to build it some kind of cave or something and put a heat lamp in there. In case we have typhoons here and it gets too cold for the Aldabras. The Aldabras would die during a typhoon because it's too cold. Isn't that crazy? The Philippines even is too cold for these tortoises. Um, that's another reptile we are definitely planning on getting eventually on the Mabuhay Squad Farm as per RJ's wishes. Okay guys, let's see our positive affirmation for Wednesday, April the 7th. I enjoy moments of silence and solitude. I listen to my inner wisdom. Ooh, love that. 
There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's positive affirmation. All right, guys, so speaking of solitude and being alone and silence, how are you all who are locked down right now? Are you guys okay? What are you doing to keep mentally stimulated um, during this lockdown period? I'm hoping they will kind of lift lockdown in a few days because I, they extended it another week, right? So I don't know, we'll see. Turns out guys, we also got another email saying that someone from the staff of this building tested positive for COVID. So now like anyone who was like at reception and all of that, maintenance and cleaning staff of this building, they're all self quarantining now. So I don't know, I guess they've hired new people to come in. I'm not sure how it's working, but yeah, it's like spreading in my building. So it's a little scary. Again, if this lockdown continues and cases continue to rise, I'm really hoping RJ and I, well, RJ considers, yeah, let, let's move, let's go. Let's, let's find a way to go to our farm and just hang out there um, and all of that. We'll just have to work out of there. I don't know, I'm not sure. But it, it's kind of freaky that, you know, people in this building have it confirmed. But the building has said, you know, has assured us they're um, double cleaning the building. They're very strict with who comes in, deliveries, that kind of thing. They even have this ultraviolet disinfector for all packages coming into the building. So this building is at least taking precautions, which is very assuring to me. Mabuhay squad, I hate to do this to ya, but RJ once again is working on a delicious creation. Mabuhay squad, you won't believe what he's cooking and it smells so good. <clears throat> Can you guess? Check it out. <laughs> 